Hello everybody, this Rhino video demo is based on the request of some viewers of this channel. Basically, they would like to know how do I go about creating the initial curves that will be used for the modeling works. Okay, let's start. To be honest, I find it hard to articulate these processes for the simple fact that there are no hard and fast rules involved. Nonetheless, I'll try my best to present my thought processes and workflow as various points. Okay, what we have on screen are some views of a conceptual hair dryer. And we will use this hair dryer as a platform to illustrate these processes. Okay, <clears throat> the first thing that you want to do is to bring the reference image into the scene and you can do so by going to surface creation and click on this icon or type picture at the command prompt okay so i'm going to put the image in and the next thing i want to do is to bring up the transparency value you can do so by going to the properties window the material tab and bring up the transparency value okay Okay, the next thing I want to do is to define the boundaries that will form the dimension of the design, the overall dimension. Okay, so okay, draw the first line and going to use the offset command and click on the offset distance and set it to be the length divided by 2. So it's 2, 3, 0 divided by 2 in our case here. <coughs> okay. Yeah. okay, this will define the overall length. And then let's scale this image. Remember to press and hold the shift key <coughs> so that it's able to fit our boundary. something like that <clears throat> okay the next thing that I want to do is to if you have additional views insert them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the top view but you notice that we cannot see any kind of meaningful features over there so <clears throat> a trick that we can use is to place points Okay, at the ends of these curves, so that they will be seen in another view. Okay, so you can see over here, we can see the points, and we know that our boundary has to be here. Okay, so I'm going to click on this and click the extrude dot function to extrude the point into a line, and then scale it. Okay, and I'm going to add a center line here as well okay now we can place our reference image okay so i'm going to select a top view place it inside here and again let's uh, set the transparency value up Okay, something like that. Okay, by the way, I have uh, created a previous video that talks about the coordinate system within Rhino and why the coordinate systems may not be ideal for the application of uh, organic modeling. 
and if you like to see this video you can click on this label over here okay in the meantime let's head over to this scene again okay. now the next thing that we want to do is to create curves that will form the surfaces okay one thing that you should not do is to trace the outline okay so you should not be doing this okay basically you should not be tracing the outline because unless your design is a simple extrusion doing this kind of work is basically meaningless because these curves will not be used for the surface creation at all okay what you need to do very importantly is to determine the potential surface creation method that will be used to create the primary surfaces okay by primary surfaces i referring to the main surfaces for example this will be a primary surface and this will be a primary surface whereas over here this area here most probably will be created using some kind of a blend and this will be thus secondary surfaces okay so the first thing you need to do is to determine the primary surfaces so one of the primary surface is here and i want to use sweep to rail to create it okay and i'm going to use the control point curve method okay an important point to take note is that often the initial surfaces that will be created will be longer than the final surface okay for example over here you can see that there is a like a like a profile over here so what needs to be done in this case here is to create a surface that extends over here and then use some kind of a process such as a trim to get this edge okay you should not be modeling using this edge especially if these edges are complex edges okay so what needs to be done is to create primary surfaces more often than not that are longer than the final result okay and then the next point that you might want to be aware of is to use the least amount of control points to express the shapes okay so in this case here let's reduce the amount of control points until we are able to have them express the shape okay Okay, something like that okay and let's do the same for the bottom part okay for the bottom part we will have to draw something like that okay over here we cannot see the part of the curve that's because it's being hidden by a secondary process over here which is a blend so nonetheless this surface will have to be created using a rail so we need to draw a rail that's along here okay so for this kind of work i would say the ability to visualize in 3d is extremely important okay um if you are not able to visualize or conceptualize uh forms in 3d um 
this kind of work will be quite uh, difficult, I would say. Again, I want to use the least amount of control points to express the shape. Okay, due to time constraint, I will just go a fast one over here. Okay, something like that, okay? okay next I want to do is to... Um, do an offset of this, okay? Be just a bit of extension. Okay. Let's trim off the excesses over here. Okay, so click on the trim. Okay, now uh, we need to create the cross section over here. And you notice that if I were to try to create a cross section using the center circle diameter and uh, object snap intersect, you notice it's quite hard to get it done. It's not impossible, but it's uh, quite hard. But you can simplify the process by using uh, visual aids again. In this case, the points again. So make sure the object snap intersect is turned on. On this, so we're going to add one point here and another point here so that we are able to see the points in the view operation over here. Okay, so uh, let's turn on the points and then let's turn on the points on object snap and then recreate it again using the circle diameter snap to point and snap to point. Yeah, so you can see that we are able to create our cross section in this manner. And let's rebuild this to degree 3. Okay, and set it to point count 12. Okay. And then let's create our surface. So, as mentioned, I certain that this area over here should be created using the sweep to rail so let's do a sweep to rail first rail second rail cross section okay. now we got our initial uh, surface okay okay as mentioned just now you notice that the surface I created is actually longer than the final form, okay? That's because the final form most probably will use a secondary process of trimming. For example, over here we have this uh, edge over here. And if you were to create your sweep to rail using this edge, your surface over here will not be smooth. So it's better to use a simpler cross section, in this case a simple circle shape curve instead of this uh, complex shape curve to create our surface and then use a secondary process of trimming to remove away this region. Okay. So yeah. yeah, one point to take note is that the modeling process might involve the ability to visualize region of the design that were previously part of the modeling process but were later on removed. Okay, so this ability to visualize this kind of steps is important. Okay. So let's uh, add this curve over here. Let me hide this for a while. Okay. 
due to time constraint, I think I will just speed up the process and sacrifice on accuracy. Okay, so let's say we got something like that. Okay, so yeah. So now that we got this curve right, we can proceed to, for example, uh, use the extrude straight command to extrude the surface from it. And let's bring back the other stuff. Okay, so most probably the process will involve trimming away these, these accessors. Okay, so let's trim this. Okay. Let's hide this, okay? So yeah, yeah. So you can see that yeah, this this is uh, one of the surfaces that's created, and most probably you need to determine, for example, over here, what is the surface creation method that will be used to create this uh, initial form, and what are the secondary processes that might be required to create the buttons, and so on, so forth. Okay. Okay. In short, you should not be tracing the the overall profile because as mentioned it will be meaningless so the main thing to remember is to determine firstly the surface creation processes that will be used to create the model and then secondly i uh, use the smoothest possible curve creation method to express the form, okay? And then another point is to have the ability to visualize the initial processes that were used to create the surfaces. For example, over here, the initial process involved creating a surface that is actually longer than the final surface. And subsequently, uh, we have to employ something like a trim to remove the excesses. Okay, then I come to the end of this demo. See you around. Bye.